More about the disintegration of experiences. Clinicians and researchers often distinguish between lower and higher level consciousness. Lower order consciousness entails sensory awareness, which is immediate, unreflective, and not processed on a cognitive level. In contrast, higher order consciousness involves reflection, self-awareness, and self-monitoring. The higher order consciousness allows an individual to be adaptive and flexible when coping with novel experiences or problem solving. Higher level consciousness also involves the capacity to link the present with past and future experiences, an ability which provides the bedrock for a cohesive sense of self. The distinction between lower and higher levels of consciousness is important in regards to the integration of experiences and the formation of a sense of self. To summarize, higher order consciousness facilitates awareness of an individual's current mental state and activities, which allows for integration of that awareness into an individual's consciousness. In contrast, lower order consciousness, as it is lacking in the self-awareness and reflectivity of higher order consciousness, does not allow conscious integration of experiences. If an experience is perceived with lower level consciousness, but not higher level consciousness, as is often the case in dissociation, then full conscious awareness of the experience is not integrated. In dissociation, the reflective function of higher order consciousness is minimized by the psyche. In this way, experiences may be blocked, separated, and disconnected from the conscious mind. Traumatic experiences prompt the psyche to dissociate conscious awareness. This is because trauma threatens to undermine a sense of coherence. Traumatic experiences can necessitate dissociation to preserve some coherent state of mind and predictability. A sense of coherence and predictability is important for the psyche, especially in childhood when sense of self is developing. When an environment or relational attachment is inconsistent and unstable, the psyche may develop to have multiple separate mental states, each formed to hold their own experiences, sense of coherence, stability, and predictability, in order to achieve a semblance of overall stability, albeit through separation. When an environment is chronically unstable, the only way for the psyche to achieve a reliable sense of stability is by fragmenting the psyche. For example, a child often cannot psychologically bear to integrate a view of the caretaker, who is a primary source of survival, as threatening or abusive, because the child's sense of security with their caretakers must be maintained for their own psychological protection. When a child experiences the caregiver as threatening, this causes the child to experience a double bind. The child feels compelled to approach the caregiver because they rely on their caregiver for survival. However, the child also feels compelled to avoid the caregiver because the caregiver is threatening. The psyche may resolve this bind by forming into two separate psychic parts, each with a polarized view of reality. Thereby, one part may feel the desire to attach to the caregiver and seek safety from them, unaware of the threat they pose as the awareness is dissociated. Meanwhile, another part, who holds awareness of the dissociated traumatic experiences and the threat posed by the caregiver, feels compelled to avoid the caregiver and is mistrusting of them. To dissociate awareness of a threatening caregiver, a trauma inflicted by the caregiver will be blocked by the psyche from higher order consciousness, held in lower order consciousness and quietly relegated into a dissociated part of the psyche to spare the child from conscious awareness of the trauma. Each psychic part holding their own view of reality, each part can relate to the caregiver in their unique way and maintain a semblance of stability by switching between these parts as the environment requires. This dissociation of experiences is especially necessary when children are faced with contradictory relationship demands or identity demands. For example, as seen in instances of parentification, apparent-child role reversal, or cases of sexual abuse. This system of psychic fragmentation allows a semblance of stability and coherence within the dysfunctional attachment relationship. Overview of DSM-5 Dissociative Disorders If dissociation is overly relied upon as a coping mechanism for a long period of time, and to the point that it negatively affects quality of life, this constitutes what psychiatrists call a dissociative disorder. Dissociative disorders indicate a disruption in the integration of identity, memory, or consciousness. The current Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, used in the field of mental health care to outline diagnostic criteria, indicates several subtypes of dissociative disorders. Each subtype of dissociative disorder manifests the psyche's disconnect from reality differently. An individual may experience one or more types concurrently. 
I will briefly describe the different types of dissociation in order to provide a preliminary explanation of the content to follow. The dissociative disorder known as depersonalization and derealization describes a recurring sense that the self and or the world is unreal. This is both a dissociative disorder in itself and a component of dissociative identity disorder. Dissociative amnesia pertains to a loss of memory and dissociative fugue involves forgetting sense of self and assuming a new identity. In all of these instances of dissociation, different aspects of reality are disconnected from awareness. If traumatic experiences that result in dissociation occur during early childhood, this can lead to the fragmentation of identity into separate streams of consciousness. This psychic fragmentation into separate parts, each with their own conscious awareness and sense of self, is called dissociative identity disorder. Individuals who meet almost all diagnostic criteria for dissociative identity disorder, but are lacking certain criteria, may be diagnosed with otherwise specified dissociative disorder, of which there are two subtypes, one which lacks dissociative amnesia and one which lacks sufficient differentiation between parts. Other dissociative symptoms that often present with dissociative disorders include conversion type dissociation or conversion disorder, historically called somatization disorder, and before that, hysteria. Conversion type dissociation involves psychogenic, psychologically induced, physical or neurological issues with no other medical cause and is preceded by extreme stress. It can affect body movement, functioning, autonomic processes, and in fact, any of the body's senses. Issues like conversion symptoms display how intricately connected the mind and body really are. In this text, I use the term psychic fragmentation to refer to the DSM-5 dissociative disorders, including dissociative identity disorder and otherwise specified dissociative disorder. I also use psychic fragmentation to refer to conditions that create the presence of a system of dissociated parts, like post-traumatic stress disorder, complex post-traumatic stress disorder, and borderline personality disorder. The degree of psychic fragmentation found in these conditions differs from the level found in DID and OSDD, as parts present in PTSD, CPTSD, and BPD are not fully differentiated. However, despite the range and degree of fragmentation, I find this term applicable because it highlights the sense of the overall psyche being divided, which is shared in these conditions. Psychic fragmentation into many senses of self. If dissociation is consistently implemented as a coping mechanism for traumatic experiences in early life, before ages six to nine, when the personality is fully formed, this can lead to the development of many defined senses of self maintained by dissociation. This is known as dissociative identity disorder or the closely related otherwise specified dissociative disorder. With dissociative identity disorder, two or more distinct identities exist within one body. The overall self or psyche is divided into multiple identities. These distinct identities are commonly referred to as alters or parts. Personality fragmentation is colloquially called multiplicity, and a person with personality fragmentation a multiple. All of the psychic parts, collectively, are known as a system. Other terms that refer to parts of a system include psychic parts, dissociated parts, personalities, identities, headmates, system members, and system mates. Less differentiated parts are known as fragments or emotional parts and hold sensory and emotional parts of an experience. Fragments hold sensory or emotional parts of an experience, sometimes holding a single emotion, memory, or aspect of experience, or fulfilling one function within the psyche. It is my theory that all parts begin more like fragments and develop into more differentiated parts as they continue to have life experiences. For this reason, I view all parts as equal. Each part has their own unique experience of life. Distinct parts possess individual thoughts, feelings, memories, worldviews, sense of self, gender, romantic or sexual orientation, and really any other qualities that may be contained within a single individual identity. In this episode, I have explained how dissociation is used to mediate psychic stress and conflicting emotional and survival needs, and how dissociation leads to a disintegration of experiences within the psyche. I have covered a general overview of the dissociative disorders and how these can lead to a conception of separate senses of self. In the next episode, I will further discuss the dissociative disorders and their roots and formation in childhood. 
I hope you have found this information helpful and thank you for taking the time to listen.